Kate, thanks for your time. A lot of people have had their say on the performance in the last two games. How would you sum up England's performance? Uh, to sum it up, I would say we've not played our best cricket. I think we've disappointed ourselves in with the ball and in the field. But having said that, I think we've had really small margins for loss. You know, we, we lost the first game by 11 and lost the second game by 7 and we didn't play our best cricket. So I think we could be in a worse position. Um, and I think it's almost a positive thing that we're not playing good cricket because we know where our areas are to improve. So it's been difficult and we've had to have some chats about what's going wrong. But I think we've still got time to put it right. So again, that's positive for me. How's the ball coming out of the hand for you? Yeah, I feel good. I felt good for touch wood about 18 months now. Um, but I think a lot of it comes down to the simplicity of my game. Um, and that was something that I went back to against the West Indies. I just wanted to make sure that I kept Deandra and, and Haley as quiet as I possibly could, especially after the start they got. And I felt like I probably went away from that against Australia. And I know that one of my strengths is just being relentlessly boring and trying to build pressure and do that often with Sophie when she bowls at the other end. So I was happier with my performance on whatever day it was against the West Indies, but I'm just obviously disappointed that I dropped that catch and then another one went down later. So I probably felt like I didn't get the rewards that I should have had. Shows that statistics aren't everything, aren't it? Because the stats will say, what, 10 overs for 30 odd, but you actually bowled England back in that game and you were relentless with your lens. You must be very proud of the way you bowled against the West Indies. Yeah, we'd done, um, we had a look at Haley before we played with our analyst and, and he said that a lot of her scoring shots from when she hit her 100 in, in the opener, none of them were taken off the stumps and that's quite a big positive for me because that's what I aim to try and do. So I knew that if I could get that right as often as I could, then I could build pressure. Um, and I think we have a stat where three or more pressure overs, which for us is less than two runs in an over. If you can build up those, then you're likely to take a wicket. And we did that with, it showed in Sophie's over where she took that too, and we got the run out. So yeah, it definitely felt like the momentum shifted at that time. Um, but that, that's my role in the team. It's not to take the glory and have five as it's just to almost be boring and, and do what can be a difficult job sometimes. So can I ask a, a silly question? Why doesn't everyone do that role? Because some of the seamers have been banging it halfway in, going for the shorter ball, which Australia put away, and to a degree West Indies put away. At some stage, why isn't it just everyone bowl length, or do they just get used to that? Uh, yeah, I think you can do, especially in the, the way that we play so much T20 cricket now. You've got to have all these change-ups, and I think that's something that I... Um, probably let myself down with a couple of years ago when I was trying to have all these variations and back of the hands and different kinds of balls and actually a, a good ball is still a really good ball at any stage of the game um, and I think as a bowling unit that's probably where we've gone away from too quickly we've gone away from the plan a too quickly so I think um, we saw against Australia how Australia combated that by dropping and running our good balls and that frustrated us um, and then I think against the West Indies again we went away from it too much in the power play um, and it also, we actually created a lot of pressure on Dottin. She, I think her strike rate was 50 or 60 at one point, but it felt like there was a lot of commotion because of the way she bats and the way she winds up. And, and she wound up to defend me, and I was absolutely petrified she was going to nail it back at me, and she didn't. So I think sometimes you've just got to really be able to analyse what you're doing in the moment, which can be hard to do in those pressure moments. Challenge of playing against South Africa, because you've got a very good record against them. You've won 21 of your last 23 ODIs. Yeah, we have a really good matchup against them, I think. Um, Anya swinging the ball into Lozelle has been something that she's, Lozelle has found quite difficult over the years. Um, but we also know that Lozelle's not played a lot of cricket and she's probably at the top of their order, one of their main batters. So um, I think it's just the challenge for us, I think, going into this game will be our mindset and not worrying too much about who we're playing. It's getting our little bits right, our wides. We've bowled far too many wides, which is not like us as a unit. Um, and like I said, making sure that we're bowling our best ball for longer. Um, and also building those partnerships with the bat as well. I think there's, there's little areas of every facet of the game that we can improve. Um, so I think if we can take away who the opposition is and just aim to get that right on Monday, then we've got a great chance of winning. Can I ask you about someone you know well that's going through a bit of a struggle, Lauren Winfield here. Where's she at with her game? Where's she at mentally? Do you reckon there's a score just around the corner for her? Yeah, I mean, Lozzy, I don't often say nice things about a, a Yorkshire person, but... Um, yeah, I'm good friends with Loz and I think everyone knows she's probably shy of the runs that she would have wanted to score. Um, and it can be difficult going out and, and batting how we want her to bat when you know that you're low on confidence. But I've absolutely no doubt she's got enough experience behind her for Yorkshire, for Northern Superchargers or for England. 
how she can turn it around. So, it, you know, if she gets to go out there tomorrow and, and have a go, then I absolutely back her to do that. And as a team, nearly every game now becomes a must-win game. Mentally, from what you see around the dressing room or the way your team are, are they up for it? Yeah, we had a really good chat today, like quite an honest chat about this is probably going to be the make or break stage of our tournament now and we're only two games in, which is not where we want to be. Um, but we also rise to challenges. I think the last World Cup, the 2017 World Cup, was probably a good example of that as well. Um, so I think it's not the place that we want to be and it's not we're not going into the third game maybe with the confidence that we would like. However... I do back this team and I think that it could be a really special turnaround for us as well. You know, if we get to that knockout stage, we could go on to win this tournament still and I think we've all got to believe that. Um, but our main thing that we've spoken about as a group is that we want to enjoy it. I think we as a group talk so much about inspiring the next generation because we love what we do and I think in the last couple of games we've probably gone away from that, which is tough because when you're losing it's, it's not easy to have a smile on your face. But you know, we want to create that energy and go out there and make sure that we're being the team that we know we can be.